Hi. Welcome to the lecture on Discovering Computers, the Enhanced Edition. And it basically a lot of just terms and terminologies as far as uh, security uh, ethics of how to you know, deal with uh, computers and a little bit about uh, privacy. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of idea what's going on. So as far as overview of the chapter, a lot of it is just defining terms, describing various uh, ways attacks could happen, discuss techniques to prevent, you know, attacks, a little bit how uh, encryption works, uh, what you need to do to save your data, backing it up, uh, how to identify risks uh, with your data, uh, how do you know that your computer system is uh, potential for somebody hacking into it. Uh, so those are things about uh, we're going to try to do. Now, so let's talk about digital security risk. Now, digital security risk is pretty much any event or action that could cause loss or damage to computer, mobile device, hardware, software, data, information, processing capabilities. Otherwise, anything that's on your computer, whether it's physical on the computer or getting access to a computer or data that's on a computer, potentially is at risk. Now, of course, any illegal activity, basically it is a crime or a cyber crime if it's an online or internet based illegal activity. Now, what are some of the risks? And you were going to go through some you probably never heard about. Hacker, you've heard. Cracker, script kitty, corporate spies on ethical employees, cyber extortionists, cyber terrorists. So some of these terms are familiar in today's world, but some of them are a little bit different. Uh, probably two of you look at Cracker and Script Kitty are probably two that you kind of go, huh? So let's go through some of those. Um, now, as far as uh, internet network attacks, there are definitely four or five different categories of uh, break-ins. Uh, malware, uh, basically that's just malicious software. Uh, there's things are going on that you really don't know that are going on. So you've responded to an ad, you responded to an email, uh, kind of go through. Now, botnet is a group of a group of compromised computers connected to uh, to a uh, network. Uh, so uh, now, granted a compromised computer individually is known as a zombie. Some weird terms, but I think you understand you know, what they can kind of uh, mean. Now, denial of service, very big. So if you're trying to get access to a network or a, an, ac an application, but I prevent you from doing it by maybe sending too many login attempts so that the server is trying to spend all its time with this uh, attack that it doesn't allow any valid users to come in, that they're denying you the service. Um, sometimes you'll hear distributed denial of service, which means they're going to have coordinated uh, computers, multiple computers make you know, coordinating you know, into attack. Uh, a backdoor is just a set of instructions that allow a user to bypass uh, the normal security logins and passwords. Uh, spoofing a technique f to make use of, you know, basically, I'm trying to get access and make it look like uh, the attempt is legit. Now, botnet, like I said, it's a botnet is a group. You know, that's, that's a key here. It's a group of compromised computers or networks. I don't know why I've got this slide in it twice, but now, how do I prevent some of these attacks? One of the things is a firewall. Firewall can be hardware or software and protects uh, your network resources from intrusion. Uh, now, you can do it, uh, do a total prevention of intrusion, or you can just say, hey, somebody's intruded, and I'm going to let somebody know that somebody got in illegally. So you can do it either way. Uh, and there's different software packages and hardware packages to do that. Now, 
what is unauthorized access? Well, it, it basically says what? I, I don't have permission to use the computer or the network. Uh, usually it's unapproved and more than likely it's probably for illegal activities. Uh, organizations can try to set up measures to prevent unauthorized. Uh, you can define a, an acceptable use policy. You can disable file and print sharing. Uh, it depends on your organization, what kind of data you have, um, and what your lawyers for that firm say. You know, say, hey, I'm going to put a policy. I'm going to give you a message. If you logged into systems that uh, give you a message of the day or something that indicates that when you first log in, hey, it's illegal to copy, you know, data from this server, you'll be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. That could be a uh, display message that every time you log in, so that if somebody does break in, at least they've been notified that if they're detected and captured, the company may go after them. Um, now, Again, access controls pretty much allow me to, to as a, an operator of a system, to define who can and can't have access to my system. You know, what access, can, you know, one login and password, but I also have to define what they can and can't see. Uh, in most cases, you're going to get a username and a password. Uh, a company will define how many attempts of illegally trying to guess your password and at that point they'll ask you what to either one totally deny you or you forgot your password please click this link and we'll notify you and send it but you got to still prove who you are now when you're setting up those passwords a passphrase basically it's just a larger uh, a, basically, it's a private combination of words, but it should be something only you can, you know about. So it could be a capital, you know, mix of capitalization, numbers, association, and the longer it is, the harder it is to crack. Uh, you've heard the term PIN, a personal identification number. Uh, basically, it's just, you know, four digit, five digit number that you type in uh, to get access. Uh, it's kind of a shortcut uh, password. Uh, Basically, if somebody wants to get in bad enough, three or four digits is not going to stop somebody from breaking in illegally. Um, uh, biometric device. Uh, some of you have iPhones. You now can use either the iPhone 10 now has, what, facial recognition to log you in and out. Or you can use your thumbprint or fingerprint to log in, get access to your, to your system. So um, those are ways that people are trying to prevent unauthorized users come in. And here you see types of devices, fingerprint reader, face recognition, hand geometry, voice verification. Uh, some places will have retina scans. Uh, that's at IS, iris recognition. Uh, some places are implementing a two-step process where you got to have a couple of different ways. You know, like you type in your password, oh, what do you want to do, an email or a text? Um, with a six-digit code or something, something that forces you to make sure that somebody has permission to get access to your your device. Now, digital forensics is a group of people that actually says, "Hey, I'm start investigating." So this is kind of like the CSI of computers, where they look at, discover, collect data to kind of figure out who's breaking in and use it in a court of law, uh, law enforcement military, you know, intelligence, criminal prosecutors, uh, insurance companies looking for insurance fraud. All of these are people that use digital forensics. Now, what are they trying to figure? They're trying to prevent software theft, uh, whether it's stealing software media, erasing programs, uh, registers or activates a program illegally, uh, illegally copies a program. All of that would be considered software theft. Now, a lot of corporations try to incorporate activation processes to make sure that the person that's registering or downloading has a licensed copy. Uh, sometimes you get an act product activation key, uh, either by a separate email, a phone call, uh, go onto a website, 
to activate a product. Uh, you'll also be told, you know, read the license agreement. It basically it's what permissions do you have to use this software? What can you and can't you, you know, do with it? Um, now, information theft. It says I have I, I may have broken, but now I'm stealing personal information. I'm stealing personal confidential information. Now, the term encryption is basically a process of converting data that basically makes it unreadable so that without the method of encrypting it, you couldn't decrypt the information. Now, you're going to hear the term digital signature. You know, please sign this. And basically, it's an encrypted code that a person, website, organization uh, attaches to a document or a message uh, that says if, if you're not, if you don't have the digital code at the back end to uh, read this, it'll, it'll fail. Uh, some organizations use what they call a digital certificate. And it's a notice that guarantees that the user and the website are legitimate. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, Google come back and say, here, this site is secure site, or it's, you know, it uses appropriate encryption techniques to secure the data to make it a secure site. Now, on the other side, there is hardware theft. So that means I can actually steal the computers, the disk drives, the printers, whatever you want to do. Um, and of course, vandalism is vandalism. I defaced, you know, destroy that information. Now, how do I kind of ultimate, how do I protect my data and stuff? Well, one of the big things is back up your data. And backup is basically have a duplicate file program media that if your computer is lost or destroyed, you can restore the data. Uh, applications you can always buy, reload, but it's the data that's associated with that application that becomes probably more important. Uh, pictures, music, if you've got a huge song list and somebody steals your computer, steals your phone, you could lose it without a backup. So uh, there are some companies you can back, you know, upload it to the cloud. Sometimes you can backload it to an external drive. I kind of do a little bit of both, so I've got data in multiple places. Now, types of backup. So, so you there are several different categories. Uh, there is a full backup, which says what? It's it's everything. I'm backing everything up from soup to nuts that's on this device. I can be either a differential or an incremental. Differential says, hey, what's the difference between the last full backup and this backup and backup just the difference? Incremental is similar in that, that it's only backing up part of your database. Selective says, hey, I'm only going to select the files that I want to back up. Uh, there are some sites that allow you continuous protection and it can backup data. So it says as you're typing, as your day is going on, it's backing things up to the cloud. Now, <laughs> The question is, you see these three, three, three generation backup policies. It says, I want to make sure that I back it up <laughs> three different types. I mean, who, who has, you know, how many different backups am I going to hold on to to make sure that I can regenerate the data that's lost? Now, we're in a wireless age. Uh, uh, so the question becomes is, how do I protect data or my computer? And stuff in a wireless world um, because it holds basically has additional security risk only because uh, I don't know I mean how far my signal from a wireless signal is transmitting so I don't know who else can get access to this so if I have an unprotected uh, uh, server access point this is what we call an access point um, wireless access point or a WAP, but there are some aspects. If you don't have enough security on this, then people can see whatever it, whatever this device has access to, an outside person would have access to it. Now, the question then becomes: there are people out there trying to steal things, but the question now becomes: what are we going to do as a society as far as ethics? You know, 
Now, granted, there are technology experts, which is basically moral guidelines that govern the use of computers and mobile devices. Um, information accuracy, we all want. <laughs> when you look at something, you want to make sure that the information that you're looking at, investigating, reading, that the information on the Internet is correct. Uh, uh, so information accuracy is very big. Um, intellectual property refers to uh, unique original works uh, you know, that a company may create. Uh, inter tech intellectual property has rights which the creators are entitled for their work. So if they created something, they should have responsibility rights, re maybe potentially receive income you know, from that work they do. Uh, copyright protects some of the information. Uh, but digital rights management is a strategy that a company needs to provide to try to make illegal distribution of movies and other document digital content you know go through now some companies are going to have you sign what they call a code of contact code of conduct and basically all that is written guidelines to help determine whether a certain specification is ethical or allowed or not allowed uh, how do you want to perf perform or behave uh, with a company's information. Uh, green computer says, hey, all I'm, I'm not sure where that falls into security, but it basically it's just saying how I'm going to try to reduce how much electricity and environmental waste that computers and mobile devices are creating. Now, a big thing is information privacy, and it basically just refers to the rights that you and companies you know, have to to deny, restrict use, and how information is going to be uh, used. Um, the right for, uh, definitely we know there's, in the cloud there are huge databases, data centers. We live in an area that has multiple in the area. Uh, a lot of it's because uh, the 321 corridor has uh, probably some of the largest fiber connection going from the southeast all the way to New York. Uh, so there'll be a lot of data centers along that pipeline just to tap into that uh, that bandwidth. Uh, now we know that websites connect collect information about you. You got to be careful what you're what you're sending. And of course, some employers will monitor your computer usage and email messages. Uh, and some people think, well, that's you know invasion of privacy. But when you s sign the contract to be hired in. Some, t some companies will say, hey, you have signed uh, certain documents that uh, give us the right to make sure we know what you're doing with uh, the computers and data we provided you. Um, now, information about you can be stored in a database. Uh, you know, companies do it all the time. When you fill out a form online, when you create a profile in a social network, when you register a product warranty, uh, all that stuff companies are keeping, and some companies are taking the information and selling it. Um, now, granted, we've heard the term cookie. Sometimes you don't know what it is. Basically, it's just a small text file that it stores on your computer that allows you to uh, not have to repeat information. It allows for personalization and username, passwords, things that just help websites and sometimes us to not have to put in passwords all the time. Just remember the stuff I've been to the site before, just remember some things. Now, from an information privacy standpoint, there's a couple of different ways. Now, phishing is, you know, is just a scam where a perpetrator tries to just send an official looking email that hoping to get some information. Uh, click jacking, you know, somebody is put in software to capture uh, all the keyboards, the, you know, Typing you're doing to kind of gather maybe password maybe you're lucky and capture get a password connected. Uh, spyware is you know program that's placed in your computer without your knowledge that kind of gathers information and then of course <laughs> once they get the information communicates that information to the outside world as if it was the user online. Uh, adware just a lot of those pop up web can you know we just all hate. Now social engineering is a term that. Um, it's gaining unauthorized access uh, or obtaining confidential information by taking advantage of trusting human nature. Uh, 
So as a spy, I'm thinking, well, if, if just by knowing how people like to be nice and maybe they're a little naive, I'm going to try to gather information by just, hey, how is your mother? I'm just trying to gather facts about you so that, you know, if you've got a favorite pet, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite number? Trying to get information that they can probably then say, hmm, let me guess your password. Uh, so it's definitely this information privacy and security, huge issue as far as the federal government's concerned and the states as far as what we're going to do store and disclose personal data. I think you, I don't know if you've seen a little bit of the news over the weekend, uh, a lot of the uh, internet providers and the social media companies are scrambling a little bit because Europe has passed tighter uh, guidelines uh, for data, personal data, uh, than the U.S. has, and there's some scrambling going on to see what what's going to happen as far as the U.S. and what the government's going to do. Um, you've got definitely employee monitoring. Uh, basically means computers, you know, manu companies are tracking what you're doing, either with cameras. Uh, and some of this stuff you say, well, cameras are good in case of security, but they can also say, hey, I want to check out what your keyboard activity is. I want to see what websites you viewed. What did you post on uh, Facebook, on, you know, Twitter? Uh, all of that stuff is potentially, you know, to do. Some companies will make it illegal, you know, to use some of those programs. Now, you may see content filtering and say, I'm going to restrict certain information. Uh, so I may, company may prevent what websites you can go to. Uh, so things of that nature. So this chapter, it's a lot of definition, a lot of high level terms, but it definitely gives us an, an awareness of uh, computers, the responsibility, security, uh, what kind of things we can kind of do to back up our data. Uh, protecting security, you know, whether it's uh, firewalls or making sure that you've got uh, you know, protected software on your PC to make sure that nothing gets destroyed, it's a great thing. So hopefully this little brief summary will help you in this chapter. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.